Yeah, thanks for joining for this very last session uh, of UI5Con. I'm Sebastian, and with me, I will. And yeah, we'll talk about um, a little hit, some hidden features inside SAP UI5. And um, what's better than start with a little demo? So, you know, it's already Friday, Friday evening. Um, was a long day. Who's tired? Yeah, a lot of people tired. So, let's assume your business people, they might also be tired now. But they still have to work uh, with my app. They have to go in there and, um, yeah, still have to manage some stuff business people do. Uh, but you know, maybe we we'll find some Easter egg to get a little bit of refreshment here. And you know, so many demos went wrong today for me. <laughs> Now I'm really angry, and I really want to shoot them all up. <laughs> so that's my revenge now to all these ugly ah, demos. So let's remove them. Bam. Just go away. Ah, I don't like it anymore. Ah, and maybe down here, this control. I just move it into the right position, and bam, it's gone, 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 go! <laughs> go away, all go away. <laughs> all go away. Ah. And that's something we haven't just implemented in this single application. We just have also another app. And also here, um, we'll have our little shoot 'em up Easter egg here. So let's start small and then shoot it up. Bam. And now we're bigger. Remove it all. Bam. Filter bar. The table. Everything. <laughs> Go away. <laughs> so. Pavel, what do you think? <laughs> Is it possible for them also to implement that just with a few lines of code? Well, with UI5, everything is possible with few lines of code. If you know what those lines are and you know where to place them. <laughs> <laughs> um, in UI5, we have lots of libraries. So those are just open UI5 libraries, but in SAP UI5, we have many more. And in each library, we have lots of stuff are, which are hidden and developers are not aware of. But today, we're not going to go through all those libraries. We're going to focus on one of them. So we're going to talk about SAP UIDT library. So you might heard of it, and you all have it, because it's already shipped since 1.30 uh, version of uh, SAP UI5 framework. Uh, and I, I believe you're even using it, but maybe you're not realizing. <laughs> so to, wh what is SAP UI DT library? To explain this, to answer this question, let's look at our products um, in UI5 world. So we have key user adaptation. So what key user adaptation is? So you can drag and drop controls, you can combine controls, split controls, remove controls on the screen. Then you can populate those changes to some other users of this application. So then they have these changes. They have changed UI. On the other hand, in SAP WebID, we have Layered Editor. With the help of Layered Editor, so you can easily create XML views. So you can just drag and drop from Palette some controls on the uh, middle side and move them around, change properties, and so on. And then you have XML. Um, file with, uh, with a view, which you can then use um, to build an application. And we have modern uh, SAP UI Visual Editor, which is used to modify 
LMS-based applications. So when we change UI from one state to another, in SAP, we call it design time. So what is common behind those tools we show you? And we also have some other tools in SAP, um, similar ones. So the common is the SAP UI DT library. So SAP UI DT library helps developers to build outstanding visual tooling on top of existing, sometimes running applications. But enough marketing, let's uh, look at, into main concepts. Yes, so um, our design time library has um, its design time object that a user that starts a tool like UI adaptation or a layout editor just um, starts that the tool instantiates. And then we have two main building blocks, overlays and plugins. So the first thing when a design time is started, it starts to create overlays. So what are overlays? So when we look at a UI5 application, we have lots of controls inside the UI5 control tree. And when our design time is now started with one control, let's assume with the form um, down here at the bottom, it starts to create overlays on top of the controls that it finds. And then, so here it finds a smart form, therefore it creates an element overlay. Then it looks into the metadata of the smart form and looks at the aggregations of it. And it finds, okay, there's a groups aggregation that has some content in there and creates an aggregation overlay um, for the groups aggregation. And inside that groups aggregation, we have two groups here. For those, it creates, again, aggregation overlays, um, element overlays. And inside, it looks for the aggregations and creates aggregation overlays, and then it creates element overlays, and so on, and so on. So the overlays um, always are, are always created on top of the UI5 controls. So um, while you think you're interacting with the controls directly, you'll always interact with an overlay on top. So the overlay's responsibility is to find the right dimension, the right positioning, and um, also the scrolling behavior um, of the control. So when you scroll, they are also kept in sync. And also the Z index. So an object page, for example, you know you can um, scroll the content, um, the sections behind the object page header. So our overlays also scroll behind the header of the object page, whereas the overlays on top of the object page header will stay on top. So all these things are handled by our overlays. And whenever something changes um, on the control side, then the overlays are kept in sync. So if you move a control around, um, the overlay moves with it. Um, if you change a property of a control and the control grows or shrinks, the overlay will do the same. So the overlay will always sit on top of the control, whatever the control does. And when the control is destroyed, then also the overlay is destroyed. So, but before we had some actions, right? So some shooting up, some movements, some drag and drop. Um, so, Pavel, how do we get the actions into um, the overlays? Well, to implement actions, we have a plugin concept. Oops, yeah, this is a yeah, plugin concept. So what are plugins? So um, when overlays, they're kind of stupid. So they, they just make sure they're on the screen in the right position and the right point of time. But plugins, they're responsible for actual actions, like drag and drop, um, cut and paste, mouse selection, and so on. So, Let's look at our schema. So um, 
the plugins, they kind of leave aside from the design time. So uh, whenever overlays are created, so design time inform plugins about new overlays. On, uh, on opposite, when overlays are destroyed, design time also inform overlays, uh, plugins, sorry, um, when they are destroyed. And uh, then plugins can, can whenever they learn about new overlays, so they can work directly with overlays. They can attach events, they can modify visualization of overlays, and so on. So in SAP UIDT library, we have uh, standard plugins. We ship standard plugins. Uh, we find this list sufficient enough. Uh, but uh, tooling, we showed you before. So they, uh, most of the tooling implement their custom plugins. And that's also why we can have this common uh, capability of Visivic tooling across all these different tools that all have their different um, developer user experience. You know, some have um, the blue selection thingy, um, some also render aggregation names or control names inside on top of the overlays, um, others don't. So um, that's something we can always handle with just starting different plugins together with the design time. Exactly. At the same time, so developers, uh, tools developers don't, do not need to re-implement the basics like drag and drop. Um, well, enough uh, theory. Let's look at usage example. So to use uh, design time, you need to ins instantiate the instance of it. So you need to include SAP UI uh, DT design time instance uh, uh, class, uh, then create an instance out of it. The second thing you need to inform design time about the root element. It can be a single element or an array of elements, which make it flexible because you can make on the same page, you can make um, different areas um, covered by design time tool. Um, and to bring actions to those overlays, you need to define plugins. So in this case, this is a um, um, example from our demo application. We used a couple of uh, standard plugins and one custom plugin. Let's have a look how easy it is to implement a custom plugin. So all plugins in SAP UIDT should be inherited from the base plugin. So first, we need to inherit plugin, then we need to register, um, define a hook which will receive new overlays. So whenever new overlays appear in, in the system, so they will, they will come to this function. And in this function, we simply, it's a simple example, right? So we simply attach a uh, browser event on double click. And on the register element, we just clean up after ourselves. Then we need to implement this on handler event, on click event. So in this on click event, we deselect the overlay. Then we attach the CSS class, which does the whole animation you, show, uh, you um, saw on the screen. So this poof effect. And when animation is finished, we just hide the control from the screen. And I should admit that no controls were harmed during the demonstration, so uh, <laughs> they're still alive. Um, <laughs> And of course, you need to stop propagation because if you don't want to uh, propagate the click event. So is that? Yeah. So <coughs> let's up, sum up a little bit what we saw here. So with the SAP UIDT library, we have the basic building blocks, the instruments that help us um, to build what you see is what you get tooling on top of UI5. Um, most of the UI5 controls already provide predefined design time metadata that allow the overlays in situations where it's not so clear where controls or elements um, or aggregations are placed in the DOM um, to know where they are. And as Pavel said, it's available for quite some time, but still kept experimental. So <clears throat> while still being experimental, it's powering stable tools. So we just kept ourselves 
for the time being uh, reserved us the rights to, to change some APIs together with our known users. But that's also why we um, applied for this talk here, um, because we wanted to get your feedback here as well. Um, are you just interested to know what's behind the scenes? Or are you also interested in building your own, what you see is what you get tooling on top of UI5? Um, outside, I saw a, free, uh, uh, a few interesting um, companies also doing editors um, and design time environments with UI5 and on top. So if you're interested and if you want us to make that public as well, please um, contact us, come later to us, reach out to us. Um, and give us your feedback. And with that, we'll just say stay curious, um, explore UI5. There are sometimes, um, even now, some hidden features available, and don't reinvent the wheel. And with that, I want to say thank you. Um, for this talk, and yeah. Wait a second, wait a second. That would be uh, too boring, right? So. Uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, if you, if you want to learn more, you can find source code here, so, um, and slides, they're public already on the GitHub. But let's kill the application. So this is a what? browser. <laughs> <laughs> no! So, <laughs> so with that, we can finish. <laughs> Cheers. <Yeah. laughs>